Hi there, thank you for purchasing one of our wine glass paint kits. Today I'm going to teach you how to do this adorable little watermelon wine glass. I've got mine taped down so it doesn't roll anywhere on me, but your kit should have come with a wine glass, two brushes, a napkin, a plate for your paint, some paints. You will also need a cup full of water to rinse our brush out in between steps. Now for this one in particular, we're probably going to have to take a lot of breaks because it's a lot of layering. So um, I'll probably pause the video or fast forward some of the breaks. So just so you know, we will have to do lots of different steps for this one. So let's get into it. Um, so I've got my clean wine glass. The first thing I want to do is do my black spots because if you can see the whole thing. There's my little tape. Um, the outside looks like the outside of a watermelon and the inside looks like the inside. So in order for that to appear on the inside, I need to first do my black spots. Oops, my tape. There we go. Stay there. So let's, um, actually before we do our black spots, I am going to grab my medium brush and I need to plan out where this green is going. I don't want to, I don't want to send you in blind and have you guess where the black spots are going. So. You can tell that there's a, a part lower and a part higher on this, right? So I'm gonna go in my front and I'm gonna go about an inch or two up from the bottom. So this is the bottom. I'm gonna go an inch or two up from the bottom and make a little mark. That's where the front of this is gonna go. Now on the exact opposite side, all the way around, you can see that green mark is in the back. I'm gonna go a little bit higher, almost all the way to the top, and I'm going to make a mark. So now we've got a slant and I want to connect those two lines in an oval. So I'm just going to very carefully try to very, very lightly sketch out and I can make this better later. Sketch out a line that's connecting it. So again, it's going to be a diagonal from this top going down. Got a smear down there. doesn't have to be totally perfect, but we do want to just know where this green is going. There we go. So that's just a general sketch. So I kind of know where my green's going and I'm not making any black dots that aren't in the right space. So again, it's low on one side and really high on the other side. Now I can put that brush in the water to wait and I can get my smallest brush and a little bit of black paint. And I can switch to the side that has all of this open space in it. And I can start to create little almost teardrop shapes, little ovals. So I'm very lightly creating just almost a little circle or oval shape. Lightly tapping my brush and I am going to do a bunch of these. I'm trying to do a nice thin layer. I'm probably going to have to go back and do two, two layers of this black step. But I'm going to start off with a nice small layer. Just trying to spread them out all throughout my inside of this. Now I do want to create a little margin. I don't want to go super close to this because you can see there's going to be a green margin and then a white margin down there if you can see that. So I'm not going to go too close to this line. That's super important. And if you do anything you don't like, you can just wipe it right off very easily. So don't worry about that. You can just wipe that right off. And I'm even going to go down into this smaller section Maybe even a dot down there. Again, I'm not going too close. That got a little close to the line. This guy got a little close to the line, but for the most part, they are all spread out throughout. Maybe I'll do another one that's kind of close to my line. Make sure it's a good, nice, even spread. And that should be good. And now I want this to dry. So I'm gonna go ahead and dry mine off. I've got a blow dryer. If you have one, you can do that. Um, but if not, you can wait just a minute or two for it to dry and do a second coat. So I am going to go dry mine off and I will be right back. 
Okay, so it's nice and dry. I'm going to want to do one more coat, let it dry, and then, um, then we'll move forward. So I'm going to just get my brush. Don't want any black on there or any water on there. I do want black on there. And I'm just gonna do a second coat, especially on the ones like this one that are a little bit, a little bit see-through. I just wanna make sure, let's see that you can see that, that it's solid black. So I'm gonna fast forward through this part so you don't have to watch me again, but go ahead and do a second coat on all of them. Try to keep the second coat nice and thin as well. Okay, so I've done all of them. Again, I'm going to go blow dry it and I'll be right back. Okay, so it's totally dry and I can get ready to cover it up and um, start to do my pinks and my whites. So first things first, I want to do um, a little bit of, uh, I think I'll do some white first. So I'm gonna rinse my medium brush off or my big brush. Such a small brush, it's hard to call it the big brush, but yes, it's the biggest brush in this instance. So I've got my big brush and I want to grab some white and I wanna make a line that is, oh my goodness, shaky hands. I'm gonna make a line that's a little below my green line. Maybe tapping it would be a little bit easier because we're painting nature and nature doesn't have to be totally perfect. So if it's not totally flat, that's fine. As long as the texture is kind of all the same. So I'm doing about half an inch down below my green and I'm making a little bit of a white line. That's gonna be part of the rind. And it's kind of tricky to see, but it's about half an inch down from my green. I shouldn't be using so much paint. Try to use just a little bit of paint as you're doing this because it'll dry faster. Tap, tap, tapping my brush. So now I've got a white margin. Once I've got that, I can actually mix some white and some red to create pink. You can do it as dark or as light as you want. White and red to make pink. And then I'm going to paint all over my um, middle area, all the way up to my white. So I'm gonna go all the way up. I'm not gonna quite touch my white yet. You wanna do just one thin coat. You don't wanna keep messing with it because you might risk scraping your black off. So one very thin coat. Super important that it's thin. Going all the way up to my white. And then in a second, I'll really take it up into the white. But I wanna give the white a little opportunity to dry for a minute before I cover it up. So again, you kinda of wanna just lay it down there you don't want to scrape it around too much. We'll be able to do lots of coats of this, as many as we need to. I think probably we'll only need two. That's normally what it takes for this painting. But um, I'm just going to smear it around everywhere that there are my little seeds all the way up to my white line. You can always mix more red and white Create some pink. Make sure I'm getting in the shot there. I'm almost done. And then in a second, I am going to go over and go all the way up to my white very carefully. So I'm just smoothing it all out a little bit. And then I'm gonna go all the way up, all the way up to my white. might overlap my white a little bit but it doesn't matter because if you can see oh, it's hard to see you can see on the inside the white is still able to be seen so as long as it's not super wet it should be totally fine I 
Okay, so now that that is done, more waiting, I am going to go blow dry mine off, but you can see how cute it's looking already. We just need one more coat of this color. I am going to go dry mine off and then we will do another coat. Okay, so I dried mine off. Time to do my second coat all over my pink. You can see it's still pretty see-through. So let's add another coat of our white and our red to make pink. I'm gonna mix a big pile with my biggest brush and then I'm going to coat the whole thing in pink. And I'll fast forward this so you don't have to watch me again. It's the same thing, just coat the whole thing in pink. Okay, so I've done my second coat. You can see it is pretty opaque. I'm going to go ahead, you guessed it, dry it off, and then I will be back to do a coat of green. Okay, so I dried mine off. Make sure at each step it's 100% dry because you might get weird chunks um, of stuff that comes off if it's not totally dry. So I am going to rinse my brush off. I'll dry it off. You wanna make sure it's completely dry, your brush. And then I will take some green and I'm just gonna start overlapping it. Just gonna paint right over it. Now, if I wanna take a little bit of white, I can as well. I might take a little bit of white. That might just, yes, brighten that up. At least for the first coat. I'm gonna go all the way to the top. Now, of course, we'll need several coats of this, but start off with your first coat. I'm trying to do my brush up and down, especially with this uh, step because that's kind of the way the stripes would naturally go from the base to the top and vice versa. So go ahead, start to give that whole glass a nice coat of green and white. Okay, so I've got my first coat down. Ooh, looks like I missed a spot. My first coat down, don't be worried, it will look patchy. I'm going to dry it off, hopefully one last time, and uh, then I will go add my last coat. Okay, so now I'm gonna go in with my last coat of, I think I'm gonna do mostly green. Try to fill in any areas. Now, watermelons are very stripy, so if there are some stripes, that's totally fine. We just want the big chunks of pink covered up. We don't want a lot of pink on there. So as I'm doing this, while it's still wet, so I've got all of this covered up, so that's looking good. I can take a little bit of white and I can kind of tap lines down while it's still wet so it kind of blends in. I can tap stripes, stripy lines to create lines that are naturally in a watermelon. And this works way better when um, the green underneath is still a little bit wet. So I recommend doing this while it's still wet. And you can just tap lines down to make streaks in your watermelon. But go ahead, fill that whole thing in, and then add your streaks. Okay, and that's it. There you have it. There is the outside, so I've got my green. Um, another optional thing you can do is rinse your brush off, and you can take any extra pink that you've got which was red and white, and you can just smear that all along the bottom. You don't have to do this, but it could be a cute little addition. Just paint right on top. That's red and white. I'm just using whatever I've got left from my 
layers, my many, many layers of pink above. And I can just smear, try to make it nice and thin, not too chunky. I'm going from the inside out. And you could also paint the stem pink if you wanted to as well. It would be cute if you did dots on this too, with little seeds. But totally up to you. There you have it. There's our finished glass. Now it's super important that you um, actually bake these. So in the uh, description of the video, I will make sure I include baking instructions. So we're going to let it cure and then you are going to bake it yourself in the oven and then it will be washable and friendly to use. So um, that's it. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed.